Hi folks, this is Professor Buckley in Mechanical Engineering. I'm here to show you um, how to make the fracture plate that you are creating in the machine shop, how to make that in SolidWorks. So we're going to focus in this little tutorial on actually making the solid model of your fracture plate. Just to remind everybody what you're making exactly, um, you are making a plate. This is what it looks like. Um, it's 160 millimeters long, so that's a little over six inches, um, and it is about a quarter of an inch thick. It's got five holes in it. Those holes have some neat features to them. This type of feature is something called a countersink. It's meant to accommodate a screw and make the top of the screw sit flush. And then there's this channel that runs along the back. In reality, with uh, fracture plates, those channels are really important because they minimize the contact between the plate and the bone that you're trying to repair. Um, the details that you'll be working off of in the shop, so you're actually going to make this out of aluminum in the shop, um, and you're going to be given a drawing, uh, engineering drawing file. You'll get this as a printout. Um, Mr. Ricketts and uh, the rest of the shop guys will have that there for you. These are all of the instructions on how to make it. So this, this type of drawing is called an engineering drawing, and it gives you all the details that you need um, to, make the, to make the part in the shop. There's a lot of information here, right, um, and this type of notation is standard. If you were to take a full drafting class, we would get into actually how to do that type of notation. Um, so what we're going to do in this module is we're going to use the information that we have here, um, which I would encourage you to look at the printout as you're following along with me. Um, you have access to this very file as a PDF. Um, follow along with me as, as I'm working through it, okay? Um, so I'm going to start uh, in SOLIDWORKS. So I've got SOLIDWORKS open. This is basically what you're going to see as the welcome. The version number might be a little different. It doesn't completely matter. Um, the buttons are really in the same place. You're going to start by uh, creating a new file. And we're going to come up here um, to a fresh page. You're going to click on part. There's different things you can create in SOLIDWORKS. We're just making a part. We're making a solid model to start. So I've got that going. Okay, and this is blank 3D space at this point. So what I'm going to do next is I am actually going to sketch in this space. I'm going to sketch, uh, and I can pick any plane, but I'll go ahead and pick the front plane. And I'm going to make the outline of the plate, okay, so the outer boundary of the plate. So I'm going to start by making this rectangle, okay, and I'm just going to plunk it down on the screen. And you notice that I used a particular rectangle tool, it's called a center rectangle. I'm now going to go ahead and uh, use a feature called Spart Dimension to set the dimensions of that rectangle based on um, what I see on my, uh, my engineering drawing. So the length, the overall length, is actually 160 millimeters, but uh, I'm going to actually make all my drawings in, um, uh, or this part, in inches, okay, to three decimal places, 6.299. The reason for this is in the shop you actually kind of have a mixed situation. We uh, bought quarter inch thick aluminum stock for you to work with. Um, so for a lot of issues here it's going to be easier to work in, um, in the U.S. units, standard U.S. units, um, instead of metric. So as a designer you need to be able to move back and forth flexibly. Um, in general medical devices are made in, in uh, the metric system, but we're going to be using English here because of our tooling. Okay, so I went ahead and typed that in. Now I'm going to go and set my width. So my width is 0.625 inches. That's a standard dimension there. Okay. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to get out of the sketch. So I've made something in 2D. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to extrude this. All right, that's going to create a solid part. I'm going to, uh, I can flip the direction of where I'm going to exclude it. I like to um, keep my front plane flush. That's a little preference there. But the extrusion is going to be set at 0.25. That's going to give me the thickness of the plate. So right now I have a rectangle that is um, the same size as, as your plate. This is going to be sort of the raw material that you're going to get. When you go into the shop uh, to actually make your plate, um, you are going to be given some material that looks just like this. We call it a blank, right? It's a blank rectangle. So uh, 160 millimeters by uh, 0.625 inches by quarter inch thick is what we have. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a channel on the back side. Um, so uh, this is a little bit trickier, all right, and I'm going to use a subtraction mechanism for this. First, it's very helpful for me to change my view. And before I do that, let me just give you a quick crash course on how I'm moving things around. So I have a standard three-button mouse. 
um, roll in, roll out on my mouse is what's zooming. Um, if I hold down uh, the center, um, hold down the roll bar, that's going to spin it around. Okay, So that's kind of what I'm doing here. So I want to get a profile of this on the edge in order to make that cut. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. Okay, so now I'm looking at this. Again, I'm looking at it dead on from the side, but this just makes my sketching a little bit easier. Okay. All right, so uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch again. I'm going to sketch on this face. So now I'm oriented on this face. And I'm going to do something kind of unique. I'm going to actually pretend like I'm drafting and I'm going to sketch along and then or make some erase marks. So basically that cutout is made by a, uh, a 0.25 radius um, uh, a circle that we're going to extrude as a cylinder to cut backwards. So I'm going to start by, I need to locate the center of that um, of that circle. And I'm going to do this using a, a kind of a trick that I like. Um, there's no harm in sketching. If you're going to make those, put those geometry skills to use. I'm going to first set this to be the same. So that's 0.625. It's going to line up exactly. Then I'm going to set this guy. That offset is 0.171. Okay. And that's going to give me the location of the center of my circle. So now I'm going to go to my circle sketch. Okay, I'm going to come over and I'm going to basically, SolidWorks is really nice. It allows um, you know, certain markers to pop up. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that center and drag my circle out. Again, I'm not too worried about setting the dimensions at, in real time as I'm moving through. Right? I can always go back and edit it. Okay, so if that's a 0.25 radius, it's a 0.50 um, diameter, which is what I have there. I'm going to click OK. And now I'm going to go back and I'm going to erase everything that I don't need on my sketch, right? So technically what I don't need is um, all of this stuff. And it's going to scream at me a little bit because I have dimensions associated with it. It's not a big deal. Okay, so now guys, I'm going to exit the sketch and I'm going to use a different feature called Extrude Cut. So on extrude cut, the first thing it asks me to do is um, select the direction that I want to extrude cut. So it's basically going to go you know, back like this. Um, I'm going to go uh, through all. Okay? Um, and then the contour that I want to select, right, I actually just want to select this little guy here. So if I do this, there's my cutout. Right? Nice, beautiful cutout. Okay, so I'm moving along pretty nice here. So next thing I want to do is I want to put in those holes, right? The holes for our screw in the fracture plate. So I'm going to start by getting a dead-on view. I like this view right here. And we're going to use something called the hole wizard to make these. This saves you a lot of time because reading off my drawing, um, there's something that says that there's like a, a let me flip over to the drawing so point exactly what I'm talking about. So this note here, this weird symbol, ANSI number 10 flathead, this guy threw 5x, 1.81, or 30 spacing. What does that mean? Well, this here is a symbol, traditional drafting symbol, for countersink. That means we're going to get this interesting feature like this that allows us to, um, to sink the head of the screw into the plate. Real plates in orthopedics, real fracture plates, are going to have this feature too. ANSI number 10 flathead um, is, stands for flathead screw. ANSI number 10 is the size of that. It's a standard sizing. That tells you everything you need to know to, to sink the, the head of the screw. So it's basically specifying everything about this kind of weird arrangement here that you can see here for how the screws are going to go in. This guy here is actually a depth. That means depth through. So that means we're going to cut all the way through with our hole. Um, 5x is the number of holes, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 holes, 1.181, that's 1.181 inches spacing. Okay, so that's saying the spacing in between these holes. These, per, these brackets here um, are what is called a reference dimension. So that says 30 is the reference. Reference dimensions are in millimeters. So I'm just, just like I have down here, it's really a 160 millimeter plate, and we're using 6.299 inches. These are equivalent. This is just English. Um, and then that's the, that's the reference dimension in millimeters. Okay, so here we go. So we're going to work on these holes now. I'm go back to my part. I'm going to use this hole wizard. Hole wizard has a lot of information to it. So first is the hole type. Okay, so I'm selecting 
This is a uh, countersink here. You can see that pop up. The standard is ANSI inch. Okay, so ANSI is a standard organization. Um, there's ANSI inch and ANSI metric. We're using inch. The number is a uh, flathead screw number 10. Okay, so you can see I can select different sizes. That's going to affect that whole type. The fit, you could do a close, normal, or loose fit. This is how the whole, how the screw fits into that hole. Um, and then the last thing we have to do is through all. Okay, so we have to make sure that that um, our holes go through everything. Okay. All right. So now that I've got everything selected about the type of hole I'm going to make to accept this standard size size screw, I'm ready to put my positions in there. Okay, so I'm going to start by um, putting a position, select the face, okay, there we go. And because of how I've set up my drawing, it's really convenient. I can make this first hole right away. So there we go. Made my first hole in the plate. So how are we going to make the other holes? Well, to make the other holes, we're going to use something called um, a linear pattern. So with linear patterns, we're going to replicate this a bunch of times. So the first thing is I'm going to select a direction. So I'm going to select this. I'm going to select the spacing. So the spacing is 1.181, right? 1.181. And the number of holes that I want, I could drive this up, right? Or I could drive it down. Okay, but we want three holes going that way. I also want to go in the other way, right? So I'm going to select another edge. I'm going to make this 1.181, go in the opposite way. Okay, flip the direction, and then I'm also asking for three holes on that side. We're going to let this one be the seed pattern, otherwise it kind of screams at you a little bit. Click OK, and there is your plate with all of the holes, folks, all of the holes. Okay, one last thing that needs to be done, guys, is you'll notice that the edges of this plate are rounded. That's called a fillet, okay, not fillet, fillet. Okay, so uh, that's a six millimeter rounded edge. Um, or 0.236, and it's here, 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 and here. So we're going to use the fillet function. I'm going to type my radius as 0.236, and then it asks for items to fill it. So I'm going to select here, here, here. Go. Rounds those edges. Okay, guys, that's everything you need to know to make a solid model of your plate.